The seventh ranked Chandler Gilbert basketball team grinded all season to earn the top playoff seed. Now they open up the postseason on home court against bitter rival Scottsdale. It's the Coyotes taking on the Artichokes in the first round of the Region 1 playoffs right here on the Chandler Gilbert Sports Network. Good evening, everyone. I'm Joe Paquino alongside Matt McCurdy. And Matt, it came down to the final regular season game for Coach Steve Silsby and the Coyotes, but they got it done to earn the top playoff seed, knocking off Yavapai on the road, 68-63. Absolutely. It was a tough game. You know, they played hard. Score, 68-63 really neck and neck the whole time. Both teams trying and fighting for that position in the playoffs. Coyotes coming out victorious. Some great plays at the end by Marlon Landingham with some game-winning free throws, putting them in the hoop and taking their team to what we have today. So now here they are on home court. Regular season, a record of 17 and one right here at the Coyote Center. They get Scottsdale for a fourth time. They beat them three times in the regular season. And Matt, by no means was any of those games an easy ride. No, absolutely. I mean, every time they play Scottsdale, you know it's going to be a battle. It's going to be a scrappy game where both teams are playing aggressive and playing their best. I mean, the majority of their games have gone to overtime, whether they're away or home. It's been, it's been fun to watch. They're fun games, they're intense, and we, we suspect this game will be no different. There's way more on the line. All those games, nail biters, and the dubious task of trying to beat a team for the fourth time, never easy, but to the Coyotes' advantage, they're here on home court where they play so well. Absolutely, yeah, no, having the advantage here in the Coyote Center, we've got great fans all the time. They've had a great record here, only losing once here on the home court, like you said. And, you know, more important than anything else, you're right. Playing a team multiple times, you're getting comfortable with each other. You know each other's strategies. You've played it. you battled it out. So now it comes down to IQ of the game, coaching the game, and, uh, and just playing your heart out and being hungry. There you go. It's all about hungry effort and energy at this point. The Coyotes on home court. This is what they've strived for all year, and now they've got it right here in their backyard as they take on the artichokes and try to move on to the Region 1 Finals on Saturday. We'll have the starting lineups and more coming up right here on the Coyote Sports Network.
And we welcome you back to the Coyote Center. Region one first round between the top seed, the Coyotes taking on the Artichokes. And Matt, once again, big props to the Coyotes. They saw their eight game winning streak snap with a bad loss at Phoenix College and then lost in an overtime heartbreaker right here by Eastern Arizona. But they bounced back with a big win at Yavapai. Wasn't pretty. No Andre Harris in that one. He had to sit out because of the two game suspension. But they bowed up, manned up, and got it done. And now they're the top seed. Absolutely. No, it's impressive to see. And it's tough when you have some game losses after having such a great streak and it gets broken. But I love the attitude from these players as we talk to them. What they take away from this is, you know what, even without some of our star players and pieces in place, we can still win at home or on the road. And, uh, and it's a learning opportunity. They are always taking opportunities to learn, grow, and become a better team. And I, I think we're going to see that tonight. Andre Harris is back, the league's fourth leading scorer at 19 a game, the sixth leading rebounder at close to eight a game, eighth in field goal percentage at close to 54%, and not to mention the player of the year mm -hmm. and region player of the year in Division II. Yeah, Andre, just an impressive player. We, and we've talked a lot about this, Joe. It's such an, an opportunity to get to see this team, all great players, but Andre especially, who leads the team and brings it down the court and, and just can do so much, whether it's down in the paint or facilitating the ball. Defensive player of the year, Justin Fisher. I believe he is the player that really makes this team go. We had a chance to talk to Justin beforehand. So excited about the accolades, but he remembers the heartbreaking <laughs> loss last year to Scottsdale. Only him and Jakob Lloyd were part of that unit that played against Scottsdale up in Scottsdale last year. And he talked about the hurt and it still lingers and he says now it's payback time on their home court and what a year Justin has had 10 5 and 4 and he's the motor behind this team. You look at this team KJ Dunn putting up 10 and 6 field goal percentage of 55% ranks 7th in the conference. Marlon Landingham averaging 10 3 and 2 ranks 10th in three point percentage at 42%. Will Coates 9 5 and 1 shooting 50% 40% from 3. Jakob Lloyd, 9-5 and 2, shooting 51%. Lockie McCain, averaging eight points, had 59 threes this year, leads the team. And 41% from three, and Deion Jenkins, so steady off the bench, 4-2 two and 2. Starting lineups for the Coyotes, of course, starts with Justin Fisher, Lockie McCain, Will Coates, Andre Harris, and Jakob Lloyd. And Coyotes average 85 points, shoot 49%, 36% from three, 69% from the line, 43 rebounds, 14 assists, eight steals, three blocks, and can't stress enough, their best season in school history, 26 and four, 18 and four in conference, and it starts by the leader, Steve Silsby in his ninth year, and of course he's the D2 coach of the year in the region. Yeah. Coach Silsby's just one of those coaches that you can rely on, and you can tell he has a great love for the game, and even more, a great love for this team, and all the boys and, and, and teams he's he's coached and, and fostered along the years. And that's what you want in a coach, someone who's gonna push the team to be better, to work together, and even with some of the adversity they faced, not giving up, and, and I love the mindset, right? I think, I think leadership is reflected in the players and Justin Fisher's mindset where we talk to him and he's hungry, right? He wants to get that payback, as you said, Joe, and, and that's a winner's mindset. And here comes Scottsdale, led by former Sun Devil star Curtis Millage. Artichokes 12 and 15 overall, eight four in league, finishing in fourth, losing the tiebreaker to Glendale on the last game of the season. They've lost two in a row coming in, losing to Pima. Then, of course, at Glendale, 78-76. Tavares Brody with 21. Rafael Canale with 16. And Charles Temple with 14 in the loss to the Gauchos. King Turner leads the team with 12 points and almost five rebounds and 51% shooting, ranked 10th in the league. Charles Temple adds 10 and three. Thomas Hastings, nine, two and two. Rafi Canale, who's, we saw how good he is in that overtime thriller here, a sharpshooter putting up eight points, leads the team with 33 threes on the season, shooting almost 40% from long range. They have great role players and David Aisho, Cash Scott and Ethan Foss and talking to Coach Steve Silsby, he says, look, this is a very dynamic team. We've 
we've got to come out and, 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 and D up immediately. We can't afford to give any easy baskets up. We've got to guard tight on the perimeter. And this is a Scottsdale team that can score, as we've seen, in so many different ways. Yeah, don't slack on Scottsdale. I think even though you look at their overall record compared to the Coyotes, there is a bit of a difference. When they come to play here, they are ready to play. And, and you're right, I've, we've seen it time and time again. They are eager. They play well together. They've got shooters. They've got down low guys who can play in the paint. I mean, they've got, they've got pieces. Starting lineup for the Artichokes. It starts with King Turner putting up 12, 4, and 2. Tavares Brody, 7, 1, and 1. Cash Scott, 6, 1, and 1. Jason Hunt, 2, 1, and 1. And Rafi Canale, who can just light it up from long range. Scott still averages 78 points, shooting 44%, 33% from three, 70% from the line, 34 rebounds, 14 assists, seven steals, and three blocks per game. History. As we mentioned, Coyotes lost in the Region 1 Finals last year in Scottsdale, 68-54. Isaiah Summers and Jalen Johnson with 12 apiece. Justin Fisher and Jakob Lloyd played sparingly in that one. So this is essentially a brand new unit facing Scottsdale in the Finals. So everything in the regular season just doesn't matter. Coyotes won those three regular season matchups. It doesn't matter. Coyotes 26-4, 18-4 in league. Scottsdale 12-15. 8 and 14 in conference, but needs to say, every game was a battle. December 16th, Coyotes won at Scottsdale 83 80. Andre Harris with 26 and 12. Lockie McCain with 15. Three threes, and he nails the big three in overtime at the buzzer to win that one 83 80. Yeah, I mean, I love what you're saying about the playoffs. You can't slack, can't take it for granted. Everything's a little bit different in playoffs. We see it all the time in, in sports. When they get to the playoff games, that's when things can shift on a dime. And so we'll see, hopefully, the best of all the boys out here tonight. Second meeting, January 20th. Coyotes won on home court, 92-84 in overtime. Andre with 23, Lockie with 18, KJ Dunn with 14. That was a game, Matt, we saw it. And the artichokes refused to die. King Turner and Rafi Canale with 14 apiece. And Canale hit three threes, all those late in the game to keep the squad in that one. And Thomas Hastings also added three threes. So we know that the artichokes, they know surrender in their heart. Yeah, the thing that's been wild to see, and you mentioned it there right there, Joe, is they actually, the aggressiveness, the intensity, as one team starts to get the lead and take over the energy of the court, they actually boost each other, and it seems to energize the other team to come back even stronger, which you don't always see in teams. Coyotes, February 14th in Scottsdale, won in regulation this time, 76-68. Andre with 27-11, Justin Fisher with 18-11, Marlon Landingham, KJ Dunn, both with good nights apiece. Thomas Hastings with 16, Charles Temple with 11, Tavares Brody with 11. So now, here we are, the fourth and final time as we are winding down both sides. Coyotes decked out in the white and teal. You've got the artichokes dressed out in the black uniforms and of course, the green and gold striping. On the other side of the bracket, Pima, the two seed, will host Glendale, the three seed tonight at 7.30. Pima led by head coach Brian Peabody has beaten Glendale all three times this season. 115-71, 107-73, 117-88. We're gonna take a short time out to stand for our national anthem.
national anthem in the books. Now, we'll take a glance at the Arizona Community College Athletic Conference men's final basketball regular season standings, Eastern Arizona. The regular season champions, 24 and six, 17 and two overall, Chandler Gilbert. Pima tied for second and third. Chandler Gilbert had the tiebreaker over Pima, winning two or three matchups, 18 and four apiece and both 26 and four. Arizona Western, the fourth seed, or the fourth in the standings, 29, 13 and six, followed by Cochise, 20 and 10, 13 and six, Scottsdale, 12 and 15, 8 and 14, Glendale, 8 and 14, 13 and 17, Glendale, the tiebreaker over Scottsdale. So the playoffs looking like this in region two. Going on tonight right here, of course, it's Scottsdale, and Chandler Gilbert with that 7.30 tip off. On the other side, Glendale and Pima, 7.30. In region one, Yavapai, the four seed, travels to Eastern Arizona. And those tip off on Saturday at 7 p.m. And on the other side, it's number two, Cochise, hosting number three, Arizona Western. Home court, so paramount, but these teams up and down, anyone can go in and steal a game and, and then all of a sudden that home team that worked so hard for that home court advantage, well, they might be out of luck and they're at the mercy of the selection committee. Mm -hmm. When we look at the basketball rankings, Chandler Gilbert, the, according to the National Junior College Athletic Association rankings of February 26, 2024, the last time they were updated, Chandler Gilbert, seventh, Pima. Just a little bit down the road, ranked 14th. And that sets this matchup up between Chandler Gilbert, a team that offensively, one of the best in the conference, the highest, almost the highest scoring team in the conference, right behind Pima, 84 points. They allow a league low 65 points. Scottsdale, they come in. They put up 78, and they give up 78. And we are closing in on tip-off, and Matt, here we go. Chandler Gilbert has worked so hard for this moment, now it's time to either survive, advance, or lose and go home. Opening tip, Will Coates will jump it. And this one is underway. And the artichokes set the tone, winning the opening tip. Good crowd on hand. These longtime rivals. Chandler Gilbert winning all three regular season matchups. That is ancient history. Inside, Lockheed down low, good defense. Scottsdale trying to pound it. And great defense by Lockheed, setting the tone. I love how they're starting, really putting pressure down the paint, making sure they close it off and don't give them that advantage at the very beginning of the game. Jason Hunt denied down in the box, Justin Fisher. The pride of Hamilton High, Andre Harris down in the box. Andre Oof, inside, wow. and what a feed to Will Coates. Andre doing his thing, and Will Coates banging down low. And there's that facilitation that we love to see from Andre. He just is so slick with it. You know, it's funny that Andre told us at one time he played at a heavier weight in the 300 pound range, and I think him slimming up has allowed him to move quicker, see the court better and be more efficient on the floor. And he said in the offseason, all he's gonna do is pound the weights and put the muscle back on, and that one is banged in. Good work by Scottsdale, and, and give the credit to the basket, Tavares Brody, good work. And the post move gets Scottsdale on the board. Great energy in the building. You can hear Scottsdale positioned right to our left. Justin Fisher almost lost the handle. Swings it to Andre in the corner. Andre, a little long, and Will underneath. Jakob, and Jakob getting tied up. A good battle underneath. And you gotta admire the intensity and on defense from the Artichokes. I mean, I know he ended up sliding a little bit at the end there, giving Justin Fisher a little bit of an advantage, but still, he's playing intense, he's working hard. Cash Scott picks up the foul. The first team foul in this one. Justin off the inbounds. Lockie. Jakob, Jakob, a little post move, a little too strong. Tracking it down and Chandler Gilbert 
with the hustle by Jakob Lloyd. Keeps the possession. And you, know, and you know, Joe, I think what might be the greatest advantage of not having Andre the past couple games is Jakob Lloyd really kind of getting some time to, to come into his game a little bit more. I love what I'm seeing from him. Jakob Lloyd with the big outing against Eastern Arizona. Double digits and rebounds and points. Fisher swings it to Andre. Andre back out to Justin. Justin oh, and Justin wow. with a sweet drive pass to Maris Brody. And I don't think he even blinked or flinched on that one. He just knew exactly what to do, how to go down the baseline and float it right in. Justin Fisher putting up 10, 5, and 3. The D2 region defensive player of the year in the conference and good move by Brody underneath. Sweet move and Brody off to a fast start. He's got four points. Brody putting up seven, one and one. He's got the muscle to bang down low and the quickness to get to the rack at ease. Fisher guarded by Cash Scott. Andre seeing the big body. Andre working inside. Andre strong. Blocked Cash Scott. Swings it over, Scottsdale on the run. Justin with the block, Justin takes it the other way. Fisher, open floor. Justin banks Ooh, it off wow. the glass, and Justin Fisher. And there's that hunger we talked about with Justin Fisher right here in the first quarter. Justin off to a fast start, he's got four points. An early 6-4 Chandler Gilbert lead. These two longtime adversaries played some thrillers in the regular season. Scottsdale not afraid to come on the road and get things Good done. Snag. Andre down in the box, working defensively against Rafi Canale. Last time we saw Rafi Canale, he had dark hair. He's all blonde out for this one. <laughs> Went into the hair supply, dyed the hair, and now he's got a fresh new look, and the Coyotes are hoping he doesn't have that same kind of long range stroke. First time out, and that is off the mark. Jakob tracks it down. Good defensive sequence by the Coyotes. But still, you can tell what a great shooter Canale is, mm -hmm. even off balance, put a good look on it. Oh, that was an impressive shot coming off the fall away and the fade away and throwing it up there. I mean, it looked really nice. Jakob being tracked down by Brody. Fisher, Ooh. six on the shot clock. Justin lets it fly, off the mark. Rebounded by Cash Scott. Scott is one of those gritty players. We saw him here in that overtime thriller. Really works hard, and how about Lockie underneath? Good defense by Andre. Swung over to Justin. Justin, inside, wow. Andre. What a finish and a great dish by Justin Fisher. And Justin Fisher and Andre Harris just locked in in this playoff game right off the bat, looking to each other, working together. You can tell there's camaraderie and chemistry between the two of them. 8-4, Chandler Gilbert with the early lead. This one, a little wow. floater, and a good move by King Turner. King Turner, high efficient score, putting up 12-4 and two, 53% field goal percentage. And this is what we've talked about, Joe. They answer the call, one scores, the other scores. There, there really is no backing down for these two teams. Jakob setting a screen against Cash Scott. Justin off balance. Oh, and my one. goodness. Justin Fisher and Cash Scott is looking at the referees. Wondering how we got called on that, but Justin Fisher working the magic yet again. Early substitutions, KJ, Parker Larson, and Marlon stepping in. KJ putting up 10 and six. Marlon putting up 10 and Parker Larson. We saw him late in the season, Matt. He brings a physical force that the Coyotes need down in the blocks. Well, and he really proved himself in these last few games where they didn't have Andre Harris filling in that role. Andre's got some big shoes to fill this season. And Parker Larson stepped up to the plate and delivered. Fisher at the line. And Justin connects on the Three-point play, a 78% free throw shooter, and King Turner lets it fly. Turner long range and knocks it down. 11-9, and King Turner off to a fast five-point start. And that is an opening that they, the Coyotes just can't leave open for King Turner. He will knock him down every day. And Steve Silsby talked about the Coyotes needing to defend the perimeter with a purpose. He said you can't leave these guys open. They're too good. And King Turner, Rafi Canale, they've got scores throughout their lineup. Fisher feeding Parker down low. 
Parker working strong. Wow. Will Coates on the great feed from Parker Larson. And Will with a couple early buckets. And Will is so good at that. Just the timing, the placement, knowing exactly where to be, when to be there, and, and, and how to get there. This is a Coyotes team so good. A 48% team field goal percentage. Good post defense on Brody. Justin the other way. And Justin drawing the contact. And Justin Fisher is locked and loaded in this one. He is in the zone. He is playing <laughs> better than probably we've ever seen. The foul on Thomas Hastings, his first. Third team foul against Scottsdale. And Justin Fisher going back to the line. He's already got seven points. Justin knocking down the first. His family's here, his mom, dad, his brother. They make it out to all the contests. And Justin, as we mentioned, we talked to him before this one. He remembers the pain of losing at Scottsdale in the Region 1 Finals. Can't say thank you enough for Paulo Hutchinson running the live stream tonight. Paulo Hutchinson, more cameras than Nikon, a man who's always on point technically. And now it's a six point lead for the Coyotes. Fisher off that fast start. Brody. Thomas Hastings in the game. Can light it up from long range, trying to get a screen. King Turner, and that is an easy drive by Chacon. All the way in. Tayton Chacon found the lane and drove with the purpose. Yeah, what a great little breakthrough. Faking the dish and then taking the opening. Marlon swings it, knocked out of bounds, and Parker and Marlon trying to work that communication on the court. And Marlon really is one of those clutch players. Once he finds his moment, gets in the zone, there's really not much that's going to stop him. He's going to find the openings. He's going to find the shots. He's just built like that. Charles Temple in the game for Scottsdale. Putting up 10-3-1, a very competent player. Marlon long range. Off the mark, rebounded. And Joe, I'll tell you, I like those shots. I like seeing shots from long range early in the game. When you're taking them late in the game in the second half, that's not the time. You need to get your shot on early and keep pounding away. And Landingham has shown the ability to knock down the three, a 42% three-point shooter. Wow. How about the block by KJ Dunn? <laughs> and they call that goaltending. Credit the basket to Rafi. Looked like KJ was looking to hold that ball against the glass and really pound it there. Dayon Jenkins checking in for the Coyotes. Such a spark plug off the bench, putting a 4-2-1. and one. Great defender. 40% field goal percentage. Andre up top. And a foul against Scottsdale will go against David Isho. And Joe, just to mention, these artichokes are clearly hitting the gym. I mean, there's some jacked guys on this team. I mean, the season is such a grind, but being a well-tuned athlete, you got to find time to be in the gym and work out and, mm -hmm. and pound the weight. If you don't, you're at a disadvantage physically. Yeah, and you've seen that play through here tonight as they kind of put their shoulder in and go straight to the hoop. McCain, so big in that first win against Scottsdale, Andre banging. And Andre will go to the line to shoot a pair. Chacon picks up the foul. And Andre's really become a master of this part of the, his game, right? Working the angles, finding the opening, and if it's not there, use it to his advantage to draw the contact. So they're gonna say it's a non-shooting contact before the shot. Coyotes with 20. On the shot clock, down in the inbounds. Andre, high off the glass and banks it in. Andre, great athleticism, just using that size and so close and so good from that range. Incredible reach from Andre, off balance. And Put KJ it over the top. With the reach in. Jakob Lloyd about to check in, KJ. Checking out a four-point Coyotes lead. 
winding down to 12 minutes left in the first half. So glad you can have us in your living room or on your computer screen. Joe Paquino alongside Matt McCurdy and Paolo Hutchinson on live stream. Appreciate all the good people at Channel Gilbert for allowing us to be your regular hosts of Coyotes basketball right here from the Coyote Center. The women also on the road tonight in the playoffs taking on top seed Mesa. Good luck to Fletcher Brown and his squad. Great defense by Chandler Gilbert, tying up Thomas Hastings. But they're gonna call the foul against the Coyotes. Looks like that call will go against Deion Jenkins. That's his first. But you gotta love, they trapped Thomas Hastings. He did not have any room to facilitate whatsoever. Yeah, really other than that open shot for King Turner and that one right there. The Cows have really been locking it up on defense, being very aggressive right from the gate. Thomas Hastings knocks down the three. This is a Scottsdale team that, that will chuck it up from three. They shoot 33%, but when they start getting in a rhythm, just like any team, they will let it fly. Andre won't go, pulled down. Scottsdale in transition. High floating shot, that's off the mark, and Jakob showing the physicality. <laughs> Marlin pulls it. Marlin racing that right side, and Marlin will reset. Lock the other side. Dayon in the corner, lets it fly. Dayon off the mark. But Andre tracks it down. And Marlin up top, lets it go. Arn oh, wow. Marlin Landingham, with long range bomb. With the fade away, the fall back, and the conversion into the hoop. 20 to 15, Coyotes. Great possession, that was just a great hustle play by Andre, and how about Oh my goodness. The shot from the elbow by Thomas Hastings, and he is picking up Hastings. Young man can light it up. Putting up nine, two and two. Off to a really good start. Marlon not afraid. Marlon rolls around the rim. Hastings with the rebound. Racing up that right side. Andre picks him up, top of the key. 20 on the shot clock. Hastings, couple dribbles. And they're gonna call the foul on Andre. And that time Andre got the call, just looked away and mm -hmm. went about his business because where the Coyotes go, they need Andre to be on point and in the game and not lose his cool. Yep. And you know what, that's a tough position as the bigger, more physically intimidating guy, in this type of sport, you gotta be careful. Usually the smaller guy, you're gonna get that reach, that call. And as a big guy too, as a, as a post, you don't nearly get as many calls either. David Aisho dumps it down. They're gonna call a reach in. And while we're taking this time for a few calls on the court, rest for tonight's game, a little recognition, Aaron Schlesinger, Chris Moulton, and Saeed Lameen. There you go. Your Dude. referees, they've got a tough task of trying to call this one in what is a heated rivalry. These longtime rivals met in the Region 1 Finals last year. Mm -hmm. And now they meet again with an opportunity to get to the Region 1 Finals on Saturday. Shot won't go by Temple. Andre pulls it down. Under 10 minutes left in this first half. Justin Fisher in front of the home crowd. Went to Hamilton High, Jakob Lloyd, physical force. Will Coates, he's not afraid to fly it from three. In the corner, Locky, no opportunity for catch and shoot, but Andre can't connect on the bunny underneath. Good defense by Tavares Brody underneath. So we're seeing Brody on Harris. Hastings driving, Hastings going strong, and Hastings wow. with a man move. Wow. Thomas Hastings has got seven. It's a one point Coyotes lead. Against the wall of Jakob Lloyd. I mean, he just floated that in with confidence and put it away. Will Coates, Jakob, ice show on him. Jakob gets it over to Justin Fisher. Fisher, couple dribbles, five on the shot clock. Andre lets it fly. That's off the mark. Lockie keeps it alive. Lockie, strong from three. 
Hastings with the rebound. What a hey. great hustle from the Coyotes to get that extra play, even though it didn't convert into a point. A great defensive sequence by Scottsdale. Winding the Coyotes down. Long range. And Oof. that is knocked down by Tavares Brody. And he's got seven points. And Scottsdale on top, 22 to 20. And Tavares Brody making his presence known tonight. He's done some great moves down low. And then pulling that three out, he's having quite the game. Lockie McCain. Justin down low and <laughs> rolls it in. The fake and the up and under over Thomas Hastings. And you got to give the, the artichokes a lot of credit. They are guarding the perimeter so tight. Mm -hmm. Lockie's trying to get off screens off the top, and they are following him body on body. Aisho down in the box. Brody going strong, and Brody with a man size move and a man size appetite. Yeah, when, when the Artichokes are attacking the inside that, that aggressively and really powering it forward, Counts are going to have to be careful not to swipe, not to throw their hands down, try to snag the ball. I mean, the Artichokes know how to draw the contact. Brody at the line, a 78% free throw shooter with the opportunity to shoot two. A very tight physical matchup early. Both teams bringing the physicality and really doing a great job fighting off screens. Jason Hunt about to check back in for Scottsdale. As well as KJ and Marlon Lanningham and Cash Scott also about to suit up for the Artichokes. Brody at the line. Good crowd in from Scottsdale. They made the trek. Took the 101 down to the 202. Got off a of Cooper. And here they are. And Tavares Brody off to a fast start, already with eight points. KJ Dunn back in. And this is and this is really the power of the artichokes. You know, just a few minutes ago, Cows had quite a little bit, a little bit of a lead here in the in the first half, and and the Archos managed to pull right back. And now they're leading with two points. Brody off to a nine-point start. Cowdy's down. 24-22. Marlin, no space. Good pass. Inside, Andre. Andre, close range, and delivers. We're knotted at 24. A back and forth slugfest between Scottsdale and the seventh ranked Coyotes. Traveris Brody denied underneath by KJ. KJ Dunn. The pride of the East Valley. Williamsville High School, just right down the road. Andre up top, guarded by Jason Hunt. And good work by KJ to draw the contact against Tavares Brody. Non-shooting, Justin off the inbounds. Swings it inside. <laughs> Tough pass in traffic. And there's that tight coverage we've been talking about from the Artichokes, really locking it down, staying on top of the Coyotes, making sure they don't have an inch in either direction to get the ball in. Justin Fisher picks up his first, and that was really just a very tight pass in traffic against the Artichokes that have really come out and not giving the Coyotes a lot of space. Temple, guarded by Andre. Brody up top. Thomas Hastings has come out on fire in this one, trying to find space. Brody swings it in the corner. Cash Scott swings it outside. Brody lets it fly, and Brody won't go. Andre with the rip. Great. Out to Justin. Great ball movement from the Artichokes on that last one, really moving the defense from the Coyotes around, find their opening. Oh, wow. Justin. <laughs> Try to swing it inside to Andre, off balance. Bad pass. Hastings the other way. Hastings dumps it down. Steal. And a steal by Justin. Justin reads the defense and pulls it back out to Will Coates. We've yet to see Will take a long range dagger, a 40% three point shooter. Marlin 
Work in the lane, Marlin. And they're gonna call the foul on Jason Hunt. And that is what Marlin's capable of doing. He puts that ball pressure on, so good at driving and so good at facilitating when he's going strong to the rack. Jakob yeah. checking in and Andre getting a breather. Yeah, Marlin's pace in the game is just really unmatched. And you can see that he can go from fast to slow really quickly, throw their defenders off, off balance, off guard, and draw that contact as we just saw. Marlon with his fourth point. A 71% free throw shooter. Putting up 10, three and one. Knocks down both. Marlon with five points. 26-24. Coyotes back on top. Justin Fisher, the Defensive Player of the Year. Andre Harris, the Division II Region Player of the Year. King Turner swings it out to Brody. Cash Scott, Scott down the lane. Off balance shot, blocked by KJ. Here comes Marlin, gold shoes and all, not afraid. Good look. Jakob Lloyd inside, Ooh. KJ. <laughs> and that is what you call High octane ball recognition. And there's a timeout on the floor, and the Coyotes go up four. And what great teamwork from these Coyotes. Not being selfish, looking for the open opportunity, and really taking the best shot available. And when we talk about this team, we have at times have been so lucky to watch this team just perform at such a high level. They're the second leading scoring team in the conference, putting up 84 points, field goal percentage, 48%. And they have a slew of players that just know how to get it done. Will Coates shooting 50% from the floor. Andre Harris, 53%. Jakob Lloyd, 51%. KJ Dunn, 55%. And they do that because they share, they care, and they know about spacing, how to set up good screens, and of course, finding each other and finding the best look. Mm -hmm. And look, you're not gonna have a bad game in these playoffs, honestly, because I mean, when you've got teams, multiple teams from the conference ranking in the national levels, like CTCC at that seventh and Pima at ninth, I believe. I mean, you're gonna have good games across the board. You've got some high energy, stellar programs and, and teams here in the Valley. So Coach Silsby talking to his team, going on a nice little run and on the other side, interim coach Curtis Miller is the former ASU star, talking to his squad, and and you can tell just how Scottsdale, they've had their ups and downs this season, but you can tell how well they play and how well they played the Coyotes. Mm -hmm. And they have brought their defensive tenacity. Anytime you can rebound and play defense, that always travels. A team that Rebounds at a good tilt. Oh. Rafi Canale up top, guarded by KJ Dunn. Canale going in, David Iso. And Iso underneath. And that was just a great little, little pass on the inside by Canelo. 28 26, Iso underneath, gets the basket. Fisher gets the screen from Jakob. Justin. And Justin's gonna get called. A tie-up call, good defense by Cash Scott. So possession in favor of the Coyotes on the jump. Fisher off the inbounds. Swings that over. And once again, another bad pass coming out of the inbounds and I show the other way gliding and delivering 28 all and once again it's just that tight aggressive defense from the artichokes locking down down in that inbound pass and then find the open lane on the back end Marlon Oof. and Marlon how about the sweet handles the foul against Rafi Canale and that one was just all 150% Marlon and the gold shoes working it hard on the court. 100%, I mean, he really, I think Canelli lost him for a second there as he took the lane and 
and managed to bump into Marlon drawing the foul. And every night Marlon wears those shoes home. He says, he clicks his heels three times and says, there's no place like home. <laughs> Marlon, the magician. 71% free throw shooter, and he's been spot on. Three of three from the line tonight. And we talked about in the game against Yavapai, their, their last game before the playoffs, Marlon, like we said, clutch player. He really came in at the end, put some free throws down, and sealed the deal for that game. That time a little long. Cowdy's up one, 29-28. Under four minutes left in a fast-moving first half. Aisho, Canale, thought about the catch and shoot, dumps it down, wow. Aisho. Great team basketball. Aisho to Brody underneath. And did we not just see that exact same play on the Coyotes end? <laughs> one, again, one again, Scottsdale just knowing how to bring the heat right back to the Coyotes. Brody with 11 first half points. Andre swings it out to Lockie. Lockie. Oh, wow. We'll, we'll finally let it fly from three. <laughs> yes, sir. And Lockie delivers. Yes, sir. The wonder from down under. And that is something he's going to have on his highlight reel right there. Strokes it. 32-30, Coyotes. Artichokes look and answer. Brody has been dynamic in this first half. Aisho going strong. And that one, that time, doesn't get the roll, but in favor of the black and green. And David Aisho has really come out and provided a spark for this team. He's been very physical. He's run the floor well. And just like the rest of the Artichokes lineup has provided a spark defensively. You know, on that last play there, I think Andre took a little bit of that contact, was looking for that hooking foul as he spun around, didn't get the call, but. Dante Marshall off the inbounds to Thomas Hastings. Hastings. Good hands. Taken away by Lockie. Lockie swings it over to Marlon. Marlon picked up by Marshall. Lockie almost had the catch and shoot. Andre up top, guarded by Brody, swings it over to Marlon. 17 on the shot clock. High screen. Marlon gliding wow. and delivering. <laughs> Highlight reel moment for Marlon. Marlon is a showman for sure. He comes on the court, he razzles, he dazzles, and he brings you into the game. He's got eight points. Coyotes up four, 34-30. Ice show. Swings over to Hastings. Jakob right in his back pocket. Brody will let it fly from three. That's off the mark. Rebounded by Justin. And the Coyotes will maneuver into the half court. And Marlins running the point. Justin playing off the ball. And Marlins okay with that because Marlin can get to the rack. Marlin going strong. Marlin again. <laughs> Marlin Lanningham and the gold shoes. Shining bright on home court. A six point Coyotes lead. And did we not just say this at the beginning of the game, when Marlon finds his zone, you let him run. You let him play, and you let him do what he does best. Marshall, and Marshall loses the handle on that Coyote's bench. They are on their feet, checking in. Now this is where it gets exciting, right? You can feel the energy shifting. The Coyotes are hyped and energetic, but we know Scottsdale. They're looking to come in and steal that energy right back. Noah Moeller checked in, number 13 for Scottsdale. Justin Fisher, buck 30 left in the half. Hastings on Justin. Steve Silsby right to our right, calling the offensive set. Justin swings it over to Marlin. Jakob up top in the high post. Ooh. Andre, bad pass by Justin. Hastings swings it over. Up and in. Shakan on the break. One minute left, Coyotes up four. Andre, down in the blocks, Andre. Floater, and it goes. Andre Harris, he's got eight. The and lead is six. And what's exciting about that is Andre Harris, as he starts to heat up and get his points on, remember, he's missed a couple games. He's been out for two games, so you get a little bit, you know, you're not in that same environment. And so it's exciting to see him starting to hit his marks. Charles Temple lost the handle, but Coyotes get in the backcourt. Justin Fisher. 35 on the game clock, 20 on the shot clock. Marlon will use every second, lets it fly from three. 
just short. Temple the other way. And Scottsdale will play for the final shot in this first half. Noah Moeller guarded by Marlin. Moeller lets it fly from three Oof. and knocks it down. The Coyotes can play for the final shot. Fisher up the floor. Justin in the lane. And it drops. Justin at the half. Fisher coast to coast. And the Coyotes with a five point halftime lead. And Justin Fisher coming to the Coyote Center with the big boy man attitude and delivering with a strong first half. Justin Fisher has absolutely proven this game that he is in the zone. This is his moment to shine and he's not going to allow Scottsdale to take this win from him. Justin Fisher, 13 first half points. Andre with eight. Marlin with 10. Coyotes leading by five and Matt in this one, a back and forth affair. Both teams trading heavyweight blows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the biggest thing, don't get too eager, don't rush things, play your game. They're doing such a great job on defense. They're doing a great job on offense, being unselfish, passing, making the looks. It's when they try to rush things and force it, that's when some of the mistakes happen. Scottsdale will take the, the, the ball downtown and put it in the hoop off the run. But other than that, I mean, impressive ball across the board. Scottsdale putting up great numbers and impressive plays. Tavares Brody with 11 to lead Scottsdale. Thomas Hastings with seven. King Turner with five. And Chacon with four. A very tightly contested matchup and both teams bringing the physicality and really doing a good job defensively. Mm -hmm. And you know what, Joe? We do a lot of prep before, before the game to see what players are coming, wh what we think will happen. But this is what I love about the sport of basketball. You never know what's going to happen. You don't know what players are going to show off and pop off and, and, and make the impact that night. And so this is exciting. The players out, you know, we knew were good coming from both sides just having a game. So we'll take a short time out here from the Coyote Center. The Region 1 opener between the top seed Chandler Gilbert squad and number four Scottsdale with the home Coyotes with a 40 to 35 lead. More to come right here on the Chandler Gilbert Sports Network.
And we welcome you back to the Coyote Center. 2.30 until we begin the second half. Coyotes with a five point halftime lead. The region one playoff opener. Coyotes 17 and one on home court in the regular season. Their only loss was a last second buzzer beater in overtime against Eastern Arizona on Saturday. But they earned the top seed and here they are taking on Scottsdale in a first half battle that went back and forth and the Coyotes secured a five point halftime lead and Justin Fisher 13 first half points to lead the Coyotes big bucket to end the first frame. Yeah he really brought the energy there at the end. It's always great to close out the first half with something impactful right and you see the coaches want to take control of those last few seconds. Well they didn't have a lot of seconds on the clock but Justin Fisher sure took control and made that impact. Had a chance to talk to Curtis Millage. He was very happy with Scottsdale's effort in the first half. He loves the way his team came out, played defense, was very sharing with the basketball, and he feels some of the keys to the success of his team in the second half, limit Andre's touches and pound the glass and play tight defense. And for Chandler Gilbert, talking to assistant coach Zachary Harrison, he said that they did not allow Scottsdale to have one offensive rebound in the first half, which was key for them. Coach Harrison said, continue to play hard defense and continue to pound the glass. And if they do that, they feel they'll have a chance. And Coyotes with a five point lead. And you look at the scoring, Justin with 13, Marlon with 10 and Andre with eight. And Marlon so good down in the box. And we saw Marlon being a great facilitator and really doing what he does, getting to the rack at ease. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he really, like we said, razzled and dazzled us, put on a show and and, and converted into points, put po points on the board for the Coyotes. And, and look, there's a lot to be proud of from that Scottsdale team. They are coming in hard, they're working hard. And like you mentioned, Joe, those offensive rebounds, if they can maintain that pressure and hold that um, those offensive rebounds away from the artichokes, that's gonna make that's gonna be a big deal in the game. You don't realize how impactful those rebounds really are. Scottsdale, 8-14 in conference. They lost the tiebreaker to Glendale. So that is why they're the four seed Glendale on the road tonight, taking on the two seed Pima. Glendale lost all three regular season matchups, all three in blowout fashion, as the Pima led the league in scoring at 104 points a tip. Wow. That team knows how to score and score at a fast pace. Now we begin the second half. Coyotes back on the floor. McCain, Harris, Jakob Lloyd, Coates, Justin Fisher, King Turner, Cash Scott, Brody, Jason Hunt, and Rafa Canale on the floor for Scottsdale. King Turner works it to Canale. Canale back to King Turner, lets it fly. Turner off the mark, Jakob battling underneath. Ford working strong, won't go. The battle ensues and Jakob gets it out to Andre. And a good crash on the glass by the white and teal to start this first frame. The opening minutes of this second half. Andre down in the box, going strong. Puts it back up and in, Andre. And the Coyotes successful in their first second half possession. And if I'm the Coyotes, I'm doing that all day long. Get it down low to Andre, let him bang it out, push it up into the, into the hoop. And it looked like could have been a travel call against Jason Hunt. King Turner the other way. Rotating and Hunt and King Turner deliver for Scottsdale in their second offensive possession of the second frame. 42-37. Andre up top, guarded by Hunt. Andre, that long approach. Justin lets it fly, rolls around the rim. Brody with the rebound. Canale coming up. Coates on Canale. Now it's Jakob swinging over. They do not want to give Canale any kind of rhythm from three. Turner gliding, wow. and Turner banks it off the glass. What a use of his length there, really coming off that screen, extending, reaching around, and putting it in the hoop. 
Turner now with nine points. McCain up top. Andre guarded by Jason Hunt. 15 on the shot clock. Andre. Wow. Couple dribbles. Oof. Andre lets it fly. Off the mark. Canale with the rebound. Swings it out. Brody. And Brody, full steam ahead, draws the contact. Jakob Lloyd will pick it up. And Brody with a strong first half. You know, that's one of those tough calls where it looked like he may have lost control of the ball a little bit, was stumbling into Jakob Lloyd, but Jakob was there and got the contact called. Brody, 6'3", but very stout. Yeah. Looks like he pounds iron regularly. And he really uses that to his advantage down in the post. You can see him putting that pressure, driving in. King Turner swings it to Canale. Good defense by Wilcoats. Canale up top, refusing to give in to Canale and let him get comfortable from three. King Turner blocked by Andre. Picked up by Justin. Great defense. Andre. He's looking for the back door from Will Coates. And they call that against the Coyotes. And Matt, that's one thing we've talked about. The Coyotes have got to be a little cleaner. They're passing into some tight windows, whether off the inbounds or, in that case, on the sidelines with no real room to operate. Yeah, when the Artochs are really reaching in that far, coming at him, trying to really get the ball and make that steal, it's tight up defense. Got to take that extra second, move around, look for a better pass. Some of those tight, tight passages not going through. Canale swings it over to Brody. Brody going wow. strong. Brody, a man size appetite. Up and in How about for Brody. those handles? Really working the ball around, giving them, giving them the sauce, and then taking it to the hoop. He's got 13. 42-41, Scottsdale counter puncturing the Coyotes. McCain picked up immediately by Canale. And Brody picks that one up. And you can see, just like you said, talking to Coach Millage, they're trying to lock down Andre. They do not want him to get that in, inbound, or the inside pass and get a good look at the hoop. That time, a nice, clean inbounds by Justin Fisher to Will Coates. McCain picked up by King Turner. Applying big time pressure. Cash Scott, a relentless defender. Fisher swings in the corner. Jakob lets it fly. Jakob oh, off the mark. So close. King Turner gliding and skying for the rebound. Canale. Chacon swings it over to King Turner. 19 on the shot clock. Canale. Turner going strong, and wow. the flush. Good to be the king, driving the lane, and Scottsdale now up one, 43-42. And Curtis Millage off his seat. Another look, courtesy of the Paolo Hutchison replay and the jam. What an absolute slam. And Roy right Coates offers on the other end with the soft touch. Coyotes back on top, 44-43. This Scottsdale team, 8-14 in league play. Cash Scott Ooh, wow. connects. Cha-ching, right into the hoop. His first bucket, 45-44, Scottsdale on top. This team that always plays the Coyotes so tight. Justin Fisher. Looks like things getting a little heated over there. Some words are exchanged. Looks like it's refs are doing a good job managing it, keeping it civil. Chacon picks up the foul. 20 on the shot clock. Marlon and KJ Dunn checking back in. And Cash Scott doing what he does. A very good defender. Tavares Brody checking out. Charles Temple back on the floor. Chacon and Thomas Hastings also on the floor. Inbounds. And 
and the violation against the Coyotes. And we talked about this, Matt. They were not good off the inbounds in the first half, and now that's carrying over to the second half, and they're giving Scottsdale extra possessions, and this team is too good to allow the Artichokes with an extra opportunity on offense. Yeah, the Coyotes are really going to need to utilize screens and a few other tricks to really get that separation they're looking for as the Artichokes are just standing right on top of them. Temple for three, and Temple knocks down the triple. Charles Temple, his first bucket of the game. And it's 48-43, Scottsdale, and they are storming on the court with a purpose. And the Coyotes have got to call a timeout, so the Coyotes led 40-35, and now in the second half, it's Scottsdale on a 13-4 run to start this second frame. And you know what, no one wants to see a timeout called after a, a point <laughs> from the opposing team or, or, or vice versa, but this is a prime opportunity. This is a good call by Coach Silsby to bring his boys together, get a game plan, and go, here's how we're gonna move forward to lock in this game. 14-43, Coyotes 17-1 on home court in the regular season. Only loss was to Eastern Arizona. Knocked off Scottsdale here in an overtime thriller. And won twice at Scottsdale in the regular season. Scottsdale playing for its postseason live. With their record, there's no chance to reach the national tournament. They've got to win out to get in. And Joe, we talked about it. You know what? Anything can happen in the playoffs. It's a different, it's a different breed, a different game, and you got to bring your A game. And even though these teams may be in record, look like a big disadvantage. As you see here tonight, they're matching it right up next to each other. On the floor right now, Justin Fisher, Andre Harris, Marlon Lanihan, KJ Dunn. <laughs> Will Coates. King Turner, Thomas Hastings, Chacon, Rafi Canale, as well as Charles Temple. Coyotes down four. Scottsdale on a 13 to four run to start the second frame. KJ almost lost the ball on, on an almost errant pass by Andre, and Chacon picks up the foul. And that's what we need to see from Andre right now, right? Get the ball into your hands and make it work. Start moving around, dribbling, pushing in, using that big, solid body of his to take it home. Chacon's third foul. Justin off the inbounds. Andre, wow. Andre misses, and Andre will go to the line. Scottsdale, you can hear the moans and groans from their bench, feeling that was clean. And Chacon picks that one up. And we just heard that from the Scottsdale side, saying referees are babysitting this one. And needs to say, Andre will go to the line to shoot a pair. And that's the thing you're gonna see as we wind down and have in this, in this second half. The refs have to call it clear, though. Artichokes are not playing soft defense. They're riding top of them. As you saw right there, they're, they're sliding in front of Andre Harris to make sure they can grab that steal and get it away from him. So, so it's a, it's going to be a it's going to be a, a game with calls. Andre now with 11 points, a 71% free throw shooter, the Region One Player of the Year in Division Two, misses on the second. Scottsdale pulls it down, 48-45. Coyotes trailing by three. Scottsdale coming out of the gates, going on a run. Thomas Hastings, what a good first half for him. Seven points, handling the ball like a champ and finding his opportunities. Charles Temple, top of the key. Temple swings it out. David Isho, Isho kicks it. And it's gonna be a blocking foul against the Coyotes. Andre, that's his second. So Scottsdale trying to get Andre in foul trouble. Andre methodically going back to his defensive assignment and just trying to blow, 
off a little steam inside his head and keep his cool and keep it all in check. Hastings off the inbounds. That time, way out. Charles Temple, top of the arc. Temple lets it fly. In and out, Andre pulls it. Ice show right there. Justin Fisher. Charles Temple had a good look. And now you hear the Coyotes, member of the baseball team, soccer team, volleyball teams, all in attendance. KJ lets it go from three. KJ connects. KJ, a huge triple. Ties it at 48. The pride of Williamsville High. And that is what the Coyotes need right there. And Canale. They have kept him in check from three. Hastings, little pull up. Off the back of the iron. Good rip by Justin. Justin brings that physicality, try to lure Canale into a foul. Andre down the box. Andre yes, going sir. strong. Rolls in and out. Aisha with the rebound. Silsby wanted the foul. Canale. It looks like a technical foul will be called on the Coyotes. Unsure on who exactly. Looks like that call will be on Marlon Landingham. So a personal foul and a technical against Marlon and Canale at the line. And that is, at times, the Coyotes' Achilles heel is their own temperament. Mm -hmm. And Canale connects on both. And that's what these playoff games can bring out in these teams. You know, they're intense. This is a rival team. They've played four times. And, and they're always tight games. And you know what? The Artichokes are doing a great job giving pressure, playing intense, and grinding the gears of the Coyotes. 50 to 48. Scottsdale on top. 13 minutes left. Bottom line, play the game hard, play the game fast, play the game with emotions in mm -hmm. check. That's paramount for the Coyotes. Scottsdale's been on point in all three categories. Temple swings it out. Hastings. Wow. Off the mark, great defense by the Coyotes. They locked him up, and Hastings, under duress, cannot connect on the iron. And I'll tell you what, the Archokes are having great success whipping that ball and doing little handoffs up around the perimeter, find themselves some good shots or even some down low looks. Coyotes just have to tighten up that defense and make sure they shift properly. Key is communication. Justin Fisher swings it to Marlon. Marlon gets the high screen from Andre. Marlon lets it fly from three. Ooh. That's off the mark. Marlon and Charles Temple and Steve Silsby. Looks like he took some contact and Sills is over there with the referee right by his side. And Sills picks himself up, back in action. Got to admire the hustle from Marlin. You know what? He put that shot up. It didn't go in. He was not going to be the guy who just watched it go out of bounds. 50 to 48. Scottsdale, the fourth seed, leading the one seed. And that's a travel call on the Artichokes on King Turner. And King Turner has been so good in this one, getting to the rack at will. That time got bottled up. Turner's got 11 points, but a big turnover. But that's what the Coyotes got to do. They've got to lock it down and keep him out. Thomas Hastings on Justin Fisher. Fisher across the half-court line. 19 on the shot clock. Will Good Coates pass. in the game. Swings it down Andre, wow. and that's got to be a foul. And Active hands by Scottsdale. And that's the tricky part of this game. The Archucks are just a fast-paced, aggressive team. And you see that. They're doing everything they can to keep it out of the hands of Andre Harris. A lot of physicality 
on that sidelines, but no call. And we know these teams, you know what? They are going to match each other. They're going to keep upping that intensity until one wins out. And it's Marlin. good. Off the catch and shoot from Andre. Marlon now with 13. 51-50. Marlon didn't catch it that first time. Came right back, put it down into the hoop. I show Oof. going in. I show blocked. blocked by Andre. Justin racing up the floor. Justin the other way. Inside, KJ Dunn. KJ blocked inside. King Turner up the court. Andre trailing him. Moeller from three. That's off the mark. Justin rips it down. Fisher now slows it down, gets the Coyotes into their half court. And a foul off the ball on Thomas Hastings against KJ Dunn. That's Hastings' second foul. And you know what, Joe? This is where it might, you know, the Archo strategy of playing that really tight up, uptight defense on the on the Coyotes all night might be a disadvantage as they get close to the end, you know? The refs have seen it all night. People get tired, you get a little sloppy, and that's when the fouls start adding and stacking up. We get a timeout on the floor. Coyotes have regained the lead, and we have seen an absolute slugfest in this one, Matt. Coyotes led 40 to 35. Scottsdale went on that 13 to four run to take a lead, and now the Coyotes have jumped back out on top, and just great offensive execution off the inbounds, Andre. Quickly to Marlon, Marlon catch and shoot, boom, Coyotes back on top. And you know what, Joe, no one wants to see a technical foul on, on the Coyotes or, or on any team, but you know what? The Coyotes need something, needed something to fire them up, and I hope that was something that really got them fired up and really gets them going and starting to score and put points on the board. I think we've seen some great energy. Marlon, obviously, coming in, shooting those threes, and then them just coming and reaching each other. But you know what? The Archokes so good at answering back. We get a block on one end from the Coyotes. Archokes get a block on the other end, take it right back. The winner will take on the winner of number two, Pima and Glendale. They're playing tonight at Pima. That will be on Saturday. Time yet to be determined. Marlon, Ooh. catch and shoot. Marlon knocks it. Marlon Lanningham now with 16. Three threes in this one for the man with the gold shoes. The golden boy strikes again. Hastings swings it out to Brody. In the game, number 24, Jake Smith for Scottsdale. Charles Temple getting locked up by Justin, knocked out of bounds. 13 on the shot clock for Scottsdale. And that's the defensive communication. You could see Marlin and Justin Fisher talking back and forth as the Archok try to make some distance, grow some space so they get a shot off, but they were gonna lock that down. Hastings off the inbounds. Marlon right in his mug. 20 in the shot clock. Smith, top of the key, picked up by Lockie. Smith, Aisho, Aisho inside. And going the other way. Another turnover by Scottsdale. Aisho looking for someone to cut to the rim, and no one was there. Good crowd on hand. Scottsdale, they travel well. Plenty of green in the crowd, and of course, plenty of white and teal in the crowd for Chandler Gilbert. And I'll tell you what, this audience is locked in to this game. Jakob, guarded by Aisho. Oof. Aisho, the quick hands. Great play by David Aisho. Brody swings out to Hastings. Hastings going in. Knocked by KJ. And but I love the aggressiveness by Thomas Hastings attacking the Coyotes, trying to draw that contact and get to the line. And just another great, massive block from KJ Dunn. He's had some tremendous, tremendous blocks here tonight. Charles Temple off the inbounds. Swings it out to Brody. Jakob right there. 19 on the shot clock. Brody going in. Brody. Oof. And KJ with the physicality. And that's KJ's second. And as we wind down in this one, nothing is going to come easy going to the rack. Brody with 13 points in this one, two of two from the line. A 65% free throw shooter. And great execution by Tavares Brody. I mean, you could tell on that play, that was really get in there, draw the contact. 
from Sierra Vista High School. And Brody connects on the first. Andre checking back in. Will Coates checking in. 54-51. Brody now with 14 points. He's brought the physicality. He's brought his poise for the team. Makes one of two. Lockie bringing the ball up the court. Guarded by the King. King Turner. 20 in the shot clock. Marlin almost thought about letting it rip. Jakob down low. Jakob. And Thomas Hastings, that's his third. And that's the great thing about Jakob, such a physical player. He's always going to put pressure on the opposing defender down in the box. Yeah, Jakob really lets the defender dictate the way he's going to move. You know, if, it, if it's pressure on one side, he's going to work the other. 9.49. Now the Coyotes, that time, clean off the inbounds. Ooh. Marlon to Lockie. Will Coates, tight defense by King Turner. Andre, Ooh. Brody tight on him. Jakob going down the lane. Jakob, Euro stepping, oh gets it to go. Jakob Lloyd, his first bucket of the game. It's a five point Coyotes lead. Jakob goes absolute stealth mode and just sidesteps. 56 51. Hastings picked up by Andre. Temple lets it fly from three. Charles Temple, release rotation, bang. Temple, the big three, his second three. And the Coyotes lead is down to two. So once again, the Coyotes build a five point lead in Scottsdale. No fear and no hesitation in their game as Charles Temple lets it fly from the left arc and connects to pull Scottsdale within two. Oh, and just watching Charles Temple, I mean, he's shooting over Andre Harris. Andre Harris does not have short arms. I mean, that is quite a long arm, big hand in your face, blocking and contesting, and he's just eye on the prize, going to put it away. 9-13 left. Good crowd on hand. Remember, folks, all Chandler Gilbert athletics are open and free to the public. And the Coyote Center multi-million dollar facility, second to none on the junior college circuit here in the state of Arizona. The Chandler Gilbert women, led by Fletcher Brown, in the playoffs for the second consecutive year, taking on top seed Mesa at Mesa, led by head coach Corey Stevenson. Jakob Lloyd swings it over to Marlin. Marlin with the hot hand, Lockie. They run the weave up top. Lockie, catch and shoot. Lockie off the top of the iron. Marlon with the quick hands. Good snag. Andre, how about the hustle by Marlon? Sets a new shot clock. Andre was rolling. Now it's Will Coates on left side. They dump it down to Andre. Andre, Charles Temple on him. Andre, the floater. And Andre with the physicality. Works it strong. The mismatch, he had Charles Temple down the blocks. Marlon saw him, fed him, and now Andre with the opportunity to capitalize. And that's a big play for Andre. He needs to keep on going at it, pushing his body against the defender, and putting it up, either drawing contact or getting the point. And, and, and truthfully, and we talked about this, you can see these calls, are, they're, are, they're starting to stack up for the, for the artichokes, and so that really tight defense might come into play big as they get into foul trouble. Andre, one of two from the line. Can't stress enough how paramount free throws will be in this contest. Cowdies as a team shoot 69%. Andre now one of three. Connects on the second. Andre, stat line. Now at 12 points, 57-54, Thomas Hastings. King Turner, Brody on that left side. Swings it up top, Jake Smith, Brody. Long range, off the mark. A battle underneath, Will Coates. The pride of Texas, ripping it down. Marlin, 
Left side, blocked by Hastings. Great defense by Thomas Hastings, denying Marlin on the three. Justin Fisher checking back in. Marlin getting a breather. KJ also back in. Jakob Lloyd checking out. KJ, five points in this one. And that's been the tough part on the perimeter all night. These boys are playing tight defense. They've got a hand in the face. I mean, you've got to be quick, and you've got to get separation if you're going to get that shot off. We're under eight minutes left in the second half. Smith, a couple dribbles. Smith almost wow. gets it to go. Temple with a rebound. Thomas Hastings. And they call a foul away from the ball. No foul on the play as the referees. Go back to live action, Charles Temple. Elbow, Temple, and Temple connects, and Charles Temple really showing his range. He's got eight points. The lead is down to one for the Coyotes. Driving the lane, Oof. KJ. Time to recollect. Justin surveys the floor from the top of the key. Lockie McCain guarded by Hastings. Eight on the shot clock. KJ sets the screen for Justin. Justin lets it go. And they call a foul down in the box against Scottsdale. Great defense by the Artichokes. And we've really seen a game all night of tremendous defense from both these teams. Maintain their positioning, locking down, and forcing each team to think outside the box, but more importantly, force them down on the shot clock. KJ at the line, 73% free throw shooter. You want physicality, KJ Dunn brings it. One on one situation. So big, comes up with the first, Coyotes up two. We are under seven minutes left from the Coyote Center. The winner advances to face the winner of number two, Pima, and number three, Glendale. KJ connects on both, he's got seven. And three point lead. And those free throws will be big. I mean, in games like this where it's so close, so tight, and they're in the bonus, it really becomes a shootout. King Turner thought about it. Now pulls it out, guarded by the Defensive Player of the Year, Charles Temple. Another elbow, this one off the mark. Temple tracks it down. Good hustle play by Charles Temple. Very gifted shooter. And Very savvy on the court. And Temple's ability to release his shot at the top of the arc on a high point really gives him that edge to get above the defensive's, the defense's hands and get into the hoop. Chacon runs into a Coyote's wall down in the box. Temple guarded by Hastings. Andre working against Brody. Andre. Loose ball. Coyotes come up with it. Lockie chases it down. KJ. Lockie swings in the corner. And we got a timeout on the floor. Steve Silsby calling that timeout. And that's a good one right there, Matt. That was a very sloppy possession by the Coyotes. They pull it, 13 on the shot clock, gives them a chance to regroup mm -hmm. and set up a good play. Yeah, I mean, got to give credit on the rebounding, the hustle, grabbing that ball. You hear from the Artoke bench, we got to get those rebounds, and they've been shouting that all night. We need to be there, we need to get that second chance on the shot, get it back down the court. So Coyotes need to be a little bit tighter on their offense, like you just said, Joe. But who's them hustling, getting the rebound for that redemption? And you look at Scottsdale, Matt. This is a team, an 8-4 league record. And when you look at them, you, you say to yourself, how did they have 14 conference losses as good and as fluid and as tough as they play? Mm -hmm. And 
their play tonight is not indicative of their record in conference play whatsoever because they're bringing in a, an A game effort here. Absolutely. And playing for their season. Their season is on the line. They lose and they're done. Coyotes don't want to give any chance to the selection committee. KJ and KJ with the contact. Foul against Thomas Hastings, and that's his fourth. And talk about using every second and maximizing that shot clock, and KJ going back to the line. Two of two from the line, he's got seven points. And gives the Coyotes some breathing room. Now back up four, Cash Scott checking in, Hastings checking out. Cash shot, God, such a relentless defender for Scottsdale. And this is the risk you run by playing a really tight, intense, in-your-face defense all night. You see the Artochs in what seems to be a little bit of foul trouble. Some of their players now getting to that fourth foul where it becomes a little bit harder to play. You have to be a little more careful, a little more cautious, and getting very close to the bonus. And Matt, as we now wind down to five minutes, Rafi Canale has been kept in check, but you got to wonder at some point when he'll be a factor in this one. King Turner picked up by Justin. Will Coates all over Rafi Canale. King Turner going strong. And King Turner will shoot a pair. And what a great call by Coach Silsby to put Will Coates on Rafi Canale. I mean, Will Coates is quick, he's fast, he's smart, he's got great IQ on the court, but he's also long and lengthy, lanky. And compared to Canale, who has a little bit of a height disadvantage in this matchup between Will Coates and himself, that plays a big deal. And we've seen that tonight, locking him down. Andre checking in, KJ checking out. KJ, once again, valuable minutes off the bench. Clutch at the line, providing a spark. Turner trying to connect on this second free throw. That one in and out. And King Turner comes up empty from the charity stripe. Coyotes up five. Five minutes left. The winner moves on to Saturday's Region 1 Finals. Marlin back to Justin. 13 on the shot clock. Marlin in the corner. Will Coates catch and shoot. Will, bang! Will Coates from long range. The pride of Texas has got nine points. And there's the sharpshooter, Will Coates, we know and love. Hasn't hit much tonight, but that is much needed here in these crucial minutes. Cash Scott surveying the floor. Up top, Andre on him as well. Cash Scott swings it out. Brody from three. Brody off the mark. Rebound by Justin. And Justin will slow it down. And Justin then picks it back up. Swings it out, Andre. Good recognition by Justin. Ran into some trouble down in the box. And Marlon not running into any trouble whatsoever. Marlon Landingham, his fourth three. He's got 19. And the Coyotes with their biggest lead of the game. They're up 11. And Scottsdale calls a timeout. Marlon Landingham, Will Coates, and Justin Fisher electrify the Coyote center with a great movement of ball. Star with Justin Fisher driving in, driving and pulling the defense together and the fast, quick kick out to get the points on the board. Charles Temple about to check back in as well as Thomas Hastings and you're looking at that Scottsdale bench led by head coach Curtis Millage and this is a team under four minutes left. Some teams would press the panic button, but Matt, we've seen this team here in a regular season matchup in one in which the Coyotes won in overtime. It was the same situation. You thought the Coyotes would pull away, and then it was Rafi Canale nailing three after three, and it forced it into overtime. And right now, this Scottsdale team, they're a desperate team, and when you know about desperate, that means they're oh so dangerous. Mm -hmm. The artichokes are not to be trifled with. The Coyotes need to stay strong on the ball, keep the pressure, keep the intensity, and I love what they're doing. Stay out of foul trouble. Get the Artichokes into foul trouble. They've been playing a tight, up, uptight defense all night long. Let them keep doing that. Let them foul. Get yourself in the bonus. And keep playing the way the Coyotes know how to play. Jakob Lloyd and Justin Fisher, the only two players 
on the bench tonight that played in the Region 1 loss last year. And Marlon Landingham, part of this team and the practice squad last year. And Marlon's come up big. An emotional player, drew that technical at the time that was costly, but has answered the bell with 19 points, four threes, nine in the second half. And in the background, there's the sound of the home court advantage. Thomas Hastings puts it on the deck. Hastings going in strong. Hastings among the trees. He's got nine. 67-58. A near turnover, and Marlin picks it up. Scottsdale trapping in the backcourt. Justin. Wow. And Scottsdale's coming full force. Every second, they can't afford to let slip off the clock without productivity. Andre. Justin. Inside, and Will Coates, and they call the offensive on Justin Fisher. 67-58 for Steve Silsby with and some words for the referee. And the refs facing a bit of the wrath of the Coyotes fan base and Coach Silsby. Canale loses it, Jakob. And Jakob does the smart thing, pulls it out. Coyotes, Justin, bang! Justin Fisher, he's got 15. The lead is 11. Justin Fisher absolutely floating in air with that amazing hang time, his talented air time, holding it and putting it back in. Justin skies, Justin open court, Justin against Canale. Oh, Will try to put it back in, and it's going the other way. 2.42 left. And it looks like a contact might have been called. Steve Silsby, livid on the sidelines. Needs to say, the clock and the scoreboard in favor of the Coyotes. Play some tight defense, get a couple of good offensive sequences, and they're moving on to Saturday. Thomas Hastings looking to change that outlook for Scottsdale. Charles Temple loses the handle. Oh. Jake Smith underneath. Floater won't go. Andre skying. Andre draws it. And to the artichokes, I tell them, be careful on that defense. These are fouls that you can't afford to risk right now. You do not need to be sending the Coyotes to the free throw line. Andre Harris, the D2 Region 1 Player of the Year. Justin Fisher, the D2 Region 1 Defensive Player of the Year. Steve Silsby, the D2 Region 1 Coach of the Year. The Coyotes racking up the postseason accolades, but none of that matters unless they can punch their ticket to the national tournament by icing it on home court. You're Andre misses the first. You're absolutely right, Joe. All the awards in the world mean nothing if they don't sink this game. This is a team that wants to win together, wants to take it to the championship level, and they know they can do that. They've secured the home court advantage in the playoffs, and they want to take it all the way. Andre, three of six from the line. He's got 13 points. Coyotes up 12. Canale, his first three of this one. Too strong, Brody underneath, Brody. And that's gonna be a reach in by Jakob. And let's give a special shout out to Jakob's family in Australia and his mom in Poland. And Brody will shoot a pair and checking in. Noah Muller, sharpshooter, hit a three late in that first half. And right now, you can expect Scottsdale to trap, and they're going to be shooting threes as if their life depended on it. Brody connects on the first. 15 points. Misses on the second. And this is the time for the Coyotes to take their time, run the clock, spread it out and just play solid ball across the board. If they can do that, they've still got an 11-point lead. Andre 
Swings over to Marlin. Marlin dishes it in the corner. Will Coates and Charles Temple battling. And Jakob's like, look, that one's on me. Yeah. So needs to say, Coyotes have eight on the shot clock. Plenty of time to set and get a good look off. And once again, you know, those are the passes that they don't need to force, right? Take your time, make the good, smart pass. Don't get yourself in a pickle where you can't get out of. Andre, quick move against Brody. Swings it up top, Justin. Ooh. Marlon lets it fly. Marlon oh, at my. the buzzer. His fourth three of the second half. Five nice. in the game. In his veins. He's got 22 on the great feed by Justin Fisher. Hastings from long range, answers on the other end. And a timeout on the floor, buck 27 left, 73-62. And Justin Fisher, showtime pass to Marlon the Magician. And Marlon pulls the rabbit out of the hat, nailing the three with the shot clock winding down. And for all those watching online, you saw the instant replay. You saw how smooth, crisp, and concise that play was. Absolute dynamite, absolute magic from Marlon Landingham and Justin Fisher. And let's give a big shout out to Ben Lloyd who's watching on the live stream. And if you're watching down under, how about put a little bit more shrimp on the barbie for us? <laughs> ben Lloyd, great to hear you chiming in here on the Chandler Gilbert Sports Network. And a big shout out to Paulo Hutchison on the live stream who's brought all his cameras, all his gear and has made this telecast as fine as you'll see on the college circuit in the state of Arizona on any given night. And right now you're taking a look at that Coyotes bench and so much to be proud of. A team 17 and one in the regular season on home court. Their only loss, Eastern Arizona in overtime at the buzzer on a three. And needs to say, they had to fight back. They had a win at Yavapai without Andre Harris in the last regular season game. They did that. They get the tiebreaker over Pima, and they're a buck 27 to moving on to the Region 1 Finals. And that Eastern Arizona game, Joe, that was a game as promised. High intensity, very fun to watch. Across the board, both teams play great. Justin Good. loses the handle, King Turner. Turner swings it out, Hastings puts on the deck. Good hands. Andre knocks it away. And the Coyotes milking the clock. They try to trap Marlon. They get over to Will Coates, and Will swings it back to Justin. And the Coyotes are calling for a timeout, and Curtis Millage and Scottsdale felt it was a key lean block. But Scottsdale will have to go back to the bench as Coach Silsby did get the timeout call. So 58.9 seconds left. The Coyotes up by 11 take care of the basketball. Milk the clock because Scottsdale's coming. They're trapping, they're coming 150 miles per hour. Whoever's got the ball, he's gonna see two defenders. Yep, this is the chance for the Coyotes to play like it's a game in the schoolyard, monkey in the middle, hold the ball, bring it down, let them try and trap, stay composed, make the quick pass over the top, and run that clock. Also back to check in, Joshua Oliver, a three-point threat for Scottsdale. Curtis Millage talking to his team. The squad, they came in here down by five at the half. They went on a 13-4 run, led 48-44. And then the Coyotes doing what they do, stand loud and proud on home court. And Marlin stepping up, four second half threes. And the Coyotes IQ and offensive execution just so on point. And you know, Joe, it looks like there's not much time on the clock, but seconds are a long time in basketball. And don't kid yourself, these artichokes know if they don't win here tonight, they ain't playing again this season. They want to lock it down and make every second count. So anything could happen. 58.9 seconds left in this one. Justin, the inbounds to Andre. Andre, okay of milking the clock. 12 on the shot clock. Andre, couple dribbles, Marlon had a good open look. Five on the shot clock, Marlon going strong, Marlon. Oh. And how about the put back dunk by Justin Fisher? 
Big time exclamation point by the pride of Hamilton High. It's a 13 point lead. Justin with 17. Cash Scott misses. And coming down hard on the court, Noah Moeller hit the deck hard and Andre pats him on the chest. Looks like that'll be a foul on number 11, Marlon Landingham. Moeller at the line and Justin Fisher put the Coyote Center on its feet with the put back jam. Moeller connects on the first one and one situation. 75, 63, 32.4 seconds left. Steve Silsby right to our right. And Moeller giving the artichokes some life. They're treading water. That one knocked out of bounds. And Coach Silsby wanted to be clear to the artichokes that this game was ended, final, and finished. You know, it's tough being beat out last season by the Scottsdale. They want to put this one in the grave, finish it, and call it a good night. Justin Fisher off the inbounds. Justin stepping up on home court, dazzling. And Justin draws the contact against Moeller. Justin, 13 first half points, big put back jam. His parents here, his brothers here, and JF going to the line. The defensive player of the year racking up the accolades and savoring the final seconds of this one. And the way he's put up points tonight, that slam dunk at there right just seconds ago, you'd think he might be an offensive player of the year. I mean, he's just a dynamite, explosive player, so fun to watch every night here at the Coyote Center. Justin, regular season, put up 10, 5, and 3, shooting 45% from the floor and comes to the court all the time with a professional attitude and just wants to get better and adds a pair. He's got 19 and keep it locked and loaded right here. We'll have more from the Coyote Center. Post-game coverage. Moeller lets it fly. That's off the mark. Jakob pulls it. And Jakob, the physical one, and you can hear it, the Coyotes <laughs> fan base, the fellow student athletes. Got members of the baseball team, the volleyball team, the soccer team here, supporting their fellow athletic teammates on the campus of Chandler Gilbert. And that's what you gotta love. You know, most, most people think that the community colleges don't have a fan base. They're not a family, but they are. They are such a family, and they're here to support each other. Jakob success. misses on the first. 16.9 seconds left. Once again, Paulo Hutchinson's got every angle of this arena covered with the camera. <laughs> In and out. Cash Scott racing up the floor. Oliver with the three. Off the mark, Andre pulls it down. And time is winding down. And Andre motions to the fellow student section, and that does it. The Coyotes knock off Scottsdale in the first round, 77-64. They've punched their ticket to Saturday's Region 1 Finals. What an intense, explosive game. Everything promised. An explosive fan base from both sides here to support and watch this victorious Coyotes team take it to the next level. Justin Fisher with 19, Marlon Landingham, with 19. Andre Harris coming up big with 13. Keep it here. We'll have post game coverage right here on the Coyote Sports Network as the Coyotes punch their ticket to the Region 1 Finals on Saturday.
funzione. And we welcome you back to the Coyotes Center where Justin Fisher and the Coyotes knock off Scottsdale in the first round of the Region 1 playoffs. JF, you brought the A game, 19 points. Big put back jam <laughs> at the end that got the crowd on its feet. Yes, sir. Your thoughts on the performance and the win? Um, first of all, just thank God for this opportunity to be here. Um, it's amazing to be, you know, moving forward. Um, I'm thankful for, you know, all my teammates, all the energy they gave. Um, getting on that rim, of course, you know, trying to bring some energy in the building. And, uh, yeah, I'm just happy we came out with that win, Joe. Absolutely. I mean, Justin, you talked right before the game about that hunger mm -hmm. to be here after that loss last season. Yes, sir. 
we saw obviously that hunger in you tonight mm -hmm. and and how did that fuel you but how did that fuel the team um just setting that tone early coming out on a defensive end usually brings us energy you know absolutely um they were competing us competing with us big in the second or first half but i knew as well, if we just continued to play our game you know continue to get stops we'd be all right so that was the game plan well that was clear you guys played so electric tonight yes, the fan base loved it yes, we loved it mm -hmm. it was an awesome performance yes sir justin for you personally great season putting up 10 5 and 2 named the region one division two defensive player of the year now you move on and home court and what would it mean to you to pull off a victory and i'm sure it doesn't matter whether it's pimo or glendale no, to get a chance on saturday to move on to the national tournament yes sir that's everything man that's the goal we set at the beginning of the year you know we had a few discussions about that um, i believe we're capable of getting there and i think we will get there so there's not a doubt in my mind we just gotta you know take tomorrow um, clean up the little things and then saturday we back at it that is Justin Fisher yes, standing sir. loud and proud. The uh -huh. pride of Hamilton High. <laughs> he is standing proud as a member of the Coyotes. 19 points in the Region 1 first round victory over Scottsdale. Keep it locked and loaded right here. Uh, more to come on the Coyote Sports Network. Thank you. Well, I've got five fingers on both hands, and Marlon Anningham is knocking down five threes tonight in big-time fashion. Marlon, 19 points, four second-half threes. It was raining threes, and you were the man to get it done tonight. Your thoughts on the win, your thoughts on your performance? Uh, I'm just happy we got the W. My teammates gave me so much confidence in the game. They kept telling me to shoot, and all the shots I was shooting they're telling me they're great shots, just keep going. And we just played for each other tonight. We got the W together. That's what I'm happy about. Your performance tonight, Marlon, was just fun to watch. I mean, entertaining the crowd. You're always an entertainer. You're, you're locking us into the performance. What, what's the mindset now that you've beat Scottsdale, lean into the next game? Uh, I know we just got to come in tomorrow, like, focus. We can't keep thinking about today. On to the next one. We got to go get the next one. Got to practice hard uh, to play hard. And Marlon, we don't know if it's going to be either Pima. You won two or three regular season matchups. It could play out against facing Glendale, and you beat them in all the regular season head-to-head -head matchups. Vice versa, it doesn't matter who you play. What is it going to take for the Coyotes to move on to the national tournament? Tip time set for Saturday at 7 p.m. Uh, I think we need to do the same thing we did in that second half. Is We came out together. We withstand their run, and we got on a run of our own, and we kept playing defense. We stood together. We didn't let none of that like shake our confidence. So we just kept trying to play the right way and play hard. That is Marlon Lenningham. The man with the golden shoes was the man with the golden gun from three. Five threes on the night, 19 points, four threes in the second half. Coyotes moving on to Saturday's Region 1 Finals. Keeping locked and loaded. More to come from the Coyote Center right here on the Coyote Sports Network.
So we wrap this one up from the Coyote Center. They pull off the big first round victory over Scottsdale, 77-64. Matt, it was a battle of heavyweights going back and forth, and the Coyotes, the last team standing, getting big performances from Justin Fisher, from Marlon Landingham, and down low in the blocks, Andre Harris doing what he does, deliver down in the paint. You can't come to a Coyotes game against Scottsdale and not love it. I mean, they put on a show on both directions. Scottsdale, hungry, won this one, did not want to be kicked out of the competition. Coyotes came in here, took care of business, and, and, and the proof is in the pudding. We see all the, the records, the scores, and uh, impressive performance. Coyotes now 18-1 on home court this season. What a performance by Coach Steve Silsby and his squad. They move on to the Region 1 Finals. Tip time set for 7 p.m. on Saturday. It's either going to be number two, Pima, or number three, Glendale. Coyotes won all the regular season matchups against Glendale. They won two of three against Pima in the regular season to win the top seed. We appreciate all the good people in the Chandler Gilbert Athletic Conference and office to allow us to broadcast these events right here on the campus of Chandler Gilbert. Paul Hutchison on the live stream. Russ Luce, the great athletic director. That is Matt McCurdy. I'm Joe Paquena. We'll see you Saturday. The Coyotes moving up and on to the Region 1 Finals on Saturday.